Greetings all, Devious Monkey. Okay, after a lot of issues with both Best Buy and UPS, I finally got this freaking ZV-1. They told me when I got it at the store that it was supposed to be there Tuesday. I knew that there was no way that that was gonna happen because I kept tracking and tracking and tracking and it never showed it even being picked up until after Tuesday. Now, I thought that I was supposed to get it then on Wednesday, according to UPS tracking. It wasn't until, like, later on Tuesday night that it showed me that there was all of a sudden a delay and that it wasn't going to be here until today. So I'm like, okay, fine, today. So when I watched the tracking yesterday, it didn't show that it even left California until later in the afternoon. And I was like, all right, there's no freaking way that this thing's gonna get here tomorrow. They're gonna screw me again. Well, I kept tracking it, because I'm anal retentive, and I tracked it and showed that it had showed up in Raleigh, North Carolina at like three o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, okay, I guess maybe it's possible that they could get it here. So I tracked it all the way and it showed that it was on the truck and out for delivery in Virginia Beach. And I'm like, sweet, I should actually get this today. Well, because of my anal retentiveness and my continual refreshing of the screen, all of a sudden I got another warning and it said that there was an address issue and it couldn't be delivered with the addresses typed. Now keep in mind, I've had that UPS store box four years. I don't get something every day, but I get enough there that everybody should freaking know me. I know they do at the store and most of the drivers should as well. So I'm thinking to myself, how in the hell is this an address problem? So I kept trying to get a hold of UPS, which is absolutely maddening to try to do through their website and their stupid virtual assistant and even on the phone. It doesn't hear what you say. Sometimes you type shit in and it doesn't take it. And at this point, I'm livid because I was supposed to get this camera two days ago. And I can't get a freaking human being on the phone. Now, normally, if my wife's here, wherever she happens to be, at this point, she'd be down in the, in the living room. She's either laughing hysterically or cringing because she hears my anger building and building and building to the point where I just start screaming into the phone, fucking human being, because I can't get a hold of anybody and I keep getting a, a shitty AI IVR that can't understand what I'm saying or can't figure out what I'm typing. Okay, I get to a human being the second time I called and she said, you know, because when I put in the address correction, which was I had to put a suite number in, which I never do, it then sent it back into the system so that now it was going to be another business day before they attempted redelivery. So I flipped my shit and I got a hold of this woman. I said, that is unacceptable. I was supposed to get this damn thing on Tuesday. I want my freaking package. So she said that she could have them hold it for me at their facility and that I could go pick it up and I said, fine, that's acceptable. Not that I wanted to drive a half an hour, 45 minutes at the end of the day trying to pick this thing up, but I would. She said that they would call me in two hours and let me know when I could come pick it up. So of course I sat here just waiting for the phone to ring and I had plenty of other things to do. And they finally called me and the woman said, you know, could you just tell me what, what the business is, where this is going? And I said, it's a UPS store. And she, I could hear her exasperation. She just went, ugh. She goes, okay, I'm gonna call the driver and I'm gonna tell him to drive back there and drop that off for you. There's no reason for you have to come all the way here. And I was like, that's fantastic. So of course, you know, I, I'm like, I, I don't understand what the problem was. Like I've never put a sweet number in. I, I get a package almost every day, uh, hundreds of packages a year for several years. What, like what, who the hell is texting me? God dang, that's annoying. Ugh. So, she was like, well, it, it's a replacement driver. He, he clearly doesn't, doesn't know. And I'm like, okay, whatever. So probably within an hour, I got notification that I got the camera. I just wanted to tell you my madness about that so that you understand like how excited I finally am to get this freaking thing. So in the meantime, 
I have uh, already had a, a battery because, again, I think I mentioned I had several batteries that were compatible with this camera from my Sony Action Cam. So I had already had those all, all charged up, ready to go. And I got the 256 gig card and, uh, oh, and I got screen protectors. So in the meantime, since I ordered this stuff, I realized that, that one of the issues, other than the battery door, other than not enough of my uh, background in there and too much of my melon in, in the screen, uh, one of the problems was the fact that the screen goes black if you're wearing polarized sunglasses, which most people are gonna do because vloggers walk around and they wear sunglasses. So I have my, my Ray-Ban normal old man glasses. They're progressive lenses because I, I can see far away, no problem. I mean, there's only a slight correction on that, which just makes things a little bit crisper, but I can't see shit close up. Like if I had my watch up here and I didn't have these on, I'd have a hard time reading it. Getting old sucks. So I got these, but uh, this is the second pair of these I got because I, I got an updated pair that have new lenses in it that not only are they progressive, but they're transition. Because the old, other pair I have of these, I didn't get transition, which I was stupid not to do. So I got transition lenses, but this has some kind of like new technology that when, even if you're sitting inside your vehicle, it, it works off of UV and it will still shade get darker even if you're inside rather than just out in the sun and it has polarization built into it somehow some kind of voodoo so that when you are exposed and they get darker and darker and darker the darker they get the more polarization comes out now earlier i had this camera out here where i was testing the steady shot i was testing the screen with these on and all that kind of stuff and just testing in general i walked outside now of course today it's overcast and it's in between rain squalls and everything, but it's still bright enough that these things get dark. So I did show that I walked outside and that these got, I mean, sunglasses dark, and I came back inside so you could still see they were dark and I can still see the screen, no problem. So I was worried that, that the screen protectors I got, I got glass screen protectors that, it, you know, it was gonna be pointless because I wouldn't be able to see the screen. So in, just in case, I also ordered uh, ones that somebody else on YouTube had tested with his camera and said these will eliminate that that polarization screen blackout. But I don't need those. But I guess that just got delivered a little bit ago. So I'm going to go pick those up and probably send those back. Or maybe I'll, I'll do some kind of giveaway or something. Okay. All that said, uh, I started to realize that even though I've watched like 400 videos on this camera, let me take those off. It's making me sick. Uh, that I still need to play with this camera because I don't certain things I don't know what the hell I'm doing and one of the things is I'm not used to the red light going so I don't pay attention to the red light telling me that I'm recording and it shut off and it shut off because I forgot to change the temperature setting from standard to high so after five minutes boom the camera shut off so I'm walking around outside and I'm you know showing all my sunglasses and this that and the other thing and walk around my house and I'm blathering on and all that kind of shit who knows how long I actually did that probably a good 15 minutes before I realized it wasn't recording which is why I'm reshooting all this shit now so there you go but I have been playing with it I got I had like an important had to be done by the end of the day work thing that, that I got done. I got that done and then I forced myself to eat lunch because I was so excited I wanted to play with this but I'm like alright you need to freaking eat before you get dizzy and all that stuff. So I did all that shit and then for the past half an hour after I put the screen protector on and all that stuff I started playing just going through the menus and looking at stuff and more importantly and this is one of the things that drives me crazy about people that, that hate on Sony, even Sony users, is that they all bitch and moan about how the menu system sucks. The menu system doesn't suck. They give you a my menu so that you can build your own menu of shit that you use and then you don't have to go through 400 pages of menu to get to what you need. So I went through and I built my menu. It, it, it took me 10 minutes and it's all done and it's all set up. I have already gotten to the point where I can throw my hand up over here behind the camera and I know where the buttons are so I can use this camera blindfolded and, and get things set more or less. I know where the buttons are, I know how to do everything, so on and so forth. Uh, I, you know, because I, I'm gonna keep looking over here because I'm not used to that, I'm used to the, the, the screen being up there. And 
I don't have product stuff on, so it, it, it will only change when I, when I move my hand in front of it. And I couldn't tell if, if it was blurry or not, uh, because I'm, I'm in like a, a focal length for my old eyes that it, it's not quite, it's either too close or too far away and I can't see shit. So hopefully this is clear. Uh, but the bottom line is I got the damn camera. I have been playing with the settings. I only got part of what I ordered to finish out my kit. Okay, real quick, I'm just going to show you the few things that I'm going to use to carry this ZV-1 around with me. It, other than I, I just don't like holding it by itself. So, of course, like everybody else, I've got this uh, Bluetooth grip. I'm not going to go through that big ass, you know, all those letters and all that kind of stuff. But the Bluetooth grip, very easy to pair. And because I have long arms, it, it, it works enough with the active stabilization on that there's enough in the screen other than just my big melon. I'll just leave it at that. I, I'll show you, I mean, when I put it on there, it's not like you haven't seen it a thousand times, but here it is on the Crane M2. And it, it doesn't quite balance correctly. And here, I'll show you. So that's as close as I could get it having the screen open as far as this thing, because of the way that it is having that screen out there, it, it's always, it's always going to lean that way. I have it over as far as it can go in every possible way, and it's still like that. But it's not so bad that I think it's going to tax the motors. And, and of course, this way is, is done correctly. So if I turn it on, boom, there. Now it's straight. And, you know, it, it works perfectly. And there we go for the vloggy selfie mode, which of course it's about the same height as the ZV-1, I mean, as the, the Bluetooth grip. So there's going to be that much distance and that much of my melon on the screen. The difference being is that I can shut off, I keep looking at the screen, sorry. I'm all messed up with all these screens today. I can shut off the active steady shot which will then crop it in from, from 30 back to 24 or crop it out, whatever the hell. It's going to move it from 30 back to 24 uh, because I'm going to have this to stabilize it and I won't have to worry about having that, that semi-okay uh, active stabilization. So that'd be good. Then the only other thing that I will use is, and let me take it back out of the crane. The switch pod which of course I put it in backwards but you get the idea it it gives you a little bit more reach and and I did show that earlier today uh, but because I didn't realize that it stopped recording you didn't get to see it but basically this is going to be another thing that I'll use a lot it is very convenient to have it far away and have something stable to put it down on I'd say probably more than likely, I'm going to use it on this on this Crane M2. Now, we have to keep in mind that right now, I have the ZV-1 just with that quick plate on it, with that uh, Peak Design Arca plate on there. And that's not going to be the way that this is going to be set up because I will have the small rig cage on it. This will be on the bottom of that, but then I'll be able to access the door and the battery and all that shit, which I can't do. Now, I already blew through one battery completely, like to the point of the camera shutting off, just with what I shot, you know, in the other footage. Uh, so that's charging, and then I put another fresh battery in, and I still have another fresh one. So I have plenty of batteries. Can't wait to get the small rig stuff, though, so I can set this all up. That's all I wanted to show you, how I have it set up on, on these three things. Uh, this will be used mostly when I don't want to dick around with power. This will probably be used more than this simply because it's more stable and it's going to look better. And, and it's really not all that much bigger than, than this. Uh, I'll do another full thing where I weigh everything and show you that it actually does work with the Crane M2. But there's no denying that, that this camera is so small that it will work with pretty much any device you've got. 
and the fact that I had it open and showed you that it balanced and worked just fine on the Crane M2 means it's gonna work on the Crane M2. That cage is not gonna add so much weight that if this thing works with an A6600 with a big ass lens on it, it's gonna work with the ZV-1. I have decided to switch even on the A6600 based off of this that I don't need to be shooting in 4K 100 megabits. I probably don't even need to shoot in 4K. That's how good this stuff is. It looks great in 1080, but I will shoot in 4K on both cameras, but I took it back from 100 megabits to 60 because I just don't need, I don't need that file size. I don't need that gigantic thing. Now, that being said, with a 256 gigabyte V30 card, it's a transcend, 256 megabyte V30 card, UHS-1, cat, whatever the frick, you know, there's 50 billion numbers on there. Either way, it isn't like a massively expensive, super duper pro whatever, and I've been recording for however many minutes, plus I've already got shit on there that I recorded. Right now I have seven hours and 20 minutes worth of space left. That's shooting at 4K, 60 megabits, 24 frames per second. I'm not gonna run out of space. I know I can blather on, but I'm not gonna blather that much. So that's all I'm gonna talk about right now. You know I don't like to do unboxings, I didn't do that. I didn't have you watch me put on a screen protector and all that bullshit. Uh, you might have gotten a kick out of some of the stuff that I did earlier when it wasn't recording, but I can't capture that essence again. So this is what you get. For now, that's all I'm gonna say and that's all I'm gonna show about this camera until I get every piece together and I build out my final kit. Because you know how long it took me to do it with the A6600, my cinema rig. So once I got everything for the cinema rig, I made a video, like I promised, and I showed you everything. That's what I'm going to do with the ZV-1. For now, I think this is going to be a fantastic, fun little camera. It, it's too light. I'm not used to it because I've been walking around with that cinema rig and, you know, the various iterations of it that uh, I can't wait to get the cage and the other shit that I'm going to put on here to, to give it some weight because it's just, it's too light. Uh, other than that, that's really it. Thank Zeus, I finally got it, and that everything seems to be working okay. I still can't tell if it's blurry or not, and that's going to bother me. Boy, I tell you, if this, if this thing's off because of some weird shit, I'm going to be really pissed. Uh, but I digress. Okay, that's all I got for you today. Again, as soon as I get all the other pieces together and get that put together into its final format, uh, I will... I'll do a video and I'll show you everything and of course I'll do it like the cinema rig and I'll, I'll link everything and tell you what I got and where you can get it. As always, thank you for joining me and putting up with my freaking coffee and anger induced frenetic pace today. Like, subscribe and all that shit and remember kids, forward and up.